I'm here out here at uh, 15 Wing Musha in the Snowbird Hangar of 431 Squadron, and uh, right now we're going to talk to an original member of 431 Squadron for the Canadian Forces, and this is from World War II. This is Leslie Lester Anderson. You had to say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, Leslie, welcome to here, and uh, welcome to Moose Jaw. Um, of course, recently, uh, the Canadian, uh, in England, there has been recognition of 431 Squadron, which was based at, in at Bern. Bern. Yes, I know. Yeah, and because you, you were there. Uh, I wasn't at Bern, but we were lost in clouds one day when we were flying from OTU. We are looking for a place to put down, and Bern was a, the one station that that we could get down. Yeah. Now, and, you joined uh, as a young man. Uh, you were born in Ontario. Right. And joined in, in Winnipeg. That's, that's right. Okay, so you went through training, and then what happened after training? Where did you go? Well, after training, I was posted overseas in April of 42. And uh, we went to Bournemouth, which is a holding unit for all Canadians. And from there, I was posted to Wigton in Scotland for AFU, Advanced Flying Unit. From there, I was posted to uh, OTU at Wellsbourne Mountford, and we did our flying out of Gaydon. From there, I was posted to uh, the heavy conversion unit at Croft. And heavy conversion means that you were flying heavy bombers. That's then. right, yes. And then, I was at the end of that, I was posted to 431 Squadron at Talthorpe. And we were there just for a matter of, of but three weeks, I guess. And then we learned that we were going back to Croft, which would be our operational station for the duration. Now, as a young man, uh, I was I was jazzing you a bit before we talked about the Brill Cream Boys and the Air Force. Yes. Now, because that was that was a phrase used. Uh, to the fact that the people who were in the Air Force were sometimes they considered to be a bit dandies as physically, but they just... Oh, on the contrary, we were gentlemen. Oh, that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, uh, of course, they were called the Brill Cream Boys because they're always sharp-looking and well-behaved. There's a little story when I told you to use, you mentioned you know, Brill Cream, so just relate that story about the Brill Cream and your brother. Well, my brother was in the Army overseas, and I knew that when I saw him, he'd want to know what I brought for him. So, and I was, Brill Cream was quite uh, the thing in those days. So I got four little bottles of Brill Cream and took them over. I gave two to my brother, kept one for myself, and I still have one at home, or kept two for myself, I guess. Yeah. I still have one at home with a little bit in it. Why I keep it, I don't know. I think it's a wonderful memento for all yeah. for those times. Now, your career, though, was interrupted a couple of times. Once uh, your plane ceased to fly and you ended up in the water. In the How did that happen? In the North Sea. Well, I was with 426 Squadron at that time. <clears throat> and uh, I'd done five trips, and this was the sixth trip to Kiel. A naval base, and we were hit by flak on a couple of occasions. And just prior to, well, we got to the target, but just to the target, and dropped our bombs and turned for home because our hydraulics had been damaged. And uh, we started for home, and fortunately, we were above clouds and we felt very. Uh, we felt okay. Mind you, the hull hydraulics had, hydraulics had been damaged. The bomb doors were open. The wheels were down. A lot of drag. Yes. And as soon as we got out of the, the clouds, we were hit by a fighter and uh, blew all one side 
out of the Wellington that we were flying at that time. So we went down to about 800 feet before the captain got control again, and eventually we got up to about 12, 1500 feet, and that's where we stayed till we ditched. And when we ditched, the aircraft broke up, and only two of us were. You were in the North Sea for five hours on a uh, or dinghy. Six or seven hours. Yeah. And. Uh, on a dinghy upside down, and we couldn't write it. We tried yeah. to, but in the, in the North Sea. We can't do it with two guys. It's, it's just two, yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. So, you, but right and away, they said, you, you said, I, I want to go back and get at it again. Well, that's true. And but uh, two, eventually about, I guess it was around eight o'clock in the morning, something like that, the other chap who was with me and was, uninjured while well, I was on my hands and knees, the only place I was comfortable, said, hey, Les, do you see what I see? And I looked up and there were two destroyers. One of them stopped. They were both stopped, but one, the second one was quite some distance away. But uh, on the one near was uh, a lot of activity on the deck. They had spotted it, and they were putting a crew aboard, to, or putting crew in the water to come and rescue us. And they eventually transferred us from there to uh, an air sea rescue launch. And we hit way, every wave top from there to Grimsby where they, we went into a naval uh, hospital yeah. and stayed there for uh, a week. Yeah. yeah. But then they said, you said you wanted to go back, and they said, well, you did such a good job of that, that uh, we'll give you a medal. Well. They, they gave you a Distinguished Flying Medal. Well. As an the NCO. Lingu no, the, yeah, the Distinguished yeah. Flying Medal, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, the other chap with me, the bomb aimer, he got the DFC, he was a, an officer, of course. Yeah. And, uh, I think he got a week's leave and I got three weeks leave. When I got back to the squadron, um, he had joined another crew and within days had gone missing for the second time. So I caught up to him some months later though. Yes, and the reason you caught up to him is that you were with another crew in Halifax's. And 431. And 431 squadron. and. Your plane was shot down again. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this time you were uh, at large for a while. That's right, for pretty well a month. And then in Brussels you got betrayed and That's on right. June the 6th, on D-Day. Uh, no, it was after D-Day. Oh, was it? I was, was it? in jail in Antwerp during on D-Day mm -hmm. and I knew that something had taken place during the night because um, about two o'clock in the morning there was all the hell broke loose and they were getting all the German prisoners, uh, people who had probably told their COs to go to hell or something yeah. like that. They were getting them all out of their uh, cells and uh, I knew that something had taken place yeah. and I assumed it was D-Day. But when they brought me my soup in the morning and I suggested that D-Day had taken place, the guard said, nine, nine, nine. I wouldn't admit it. Yeah. No. yeah. And you were there for uh, almost a year? Uh, well, I was in jail in Antwerp for 25 days, and then I was moved to Stalingrad 3, and to the, Bel uh, the Bellaria compound. Yeah, and that's where you ran into your, your friend again? Is that where you ran into the bomb aimer? I, uh, I uh, I didn't meet uh, the chap who had been in the in the dinghy with me yeah. because he was in another compound. Oh, okay. Now, Bellaria, or at least uh, Bellaria, was just one compound of Sally Glove Three. Uh, there were four others. Okay. Well, you know, uh, we've been talking, and you're here for a special occasion. 
and that is that it's the 70th anniversary of 431 Squadron, and you've come to be the guest of honor at the mess dinner. Which well, is, I feel very honored. Yeah. Well, I, 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 as yeah. are we all, to be able to have you here with us. Uh, you know, you've, it's another lifetime. Yeah, and you were telling me earlier, you said, you know, I said, you, were you flying afterwards? You said, no, but my son was a pilot. But you, you talked about living a good life and you don't take life too seriously. Yes. I worked for Air Canada. My son flew for uh, Canadian Pacific first and then transferred to Air Canada. My daughter flew as a stewardess and her daughter flew as a stewardess. That's so, pretty good, Dan. And, yeah. and you've had a good life. Well, so far. Yeah. Yes, I've I've been very fortunate. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, you, you talked. My, to I belong to the POW uh, group, and my buddies there used to say, "Well, if you're shot down twice, obviously you deserved it." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really great to have you here in Moose Jaw, and I mm -hmm. want to thank you. Uh, we're just before Remembrance Day when we're when we're doing this, and it's nice to be able to thank a veteran for what you have done for our country and for the family and generations that have followed you. So thank you very much. My pleasure.